to the LEAF Open Farm Sunday Bite Size webinar. I'm Annabelle Shackleton, LEAF's Open Farm Sunday Manager, and I will be your host here today. This webinar is designed for farmers hosting their first Open Farm Sunday event on the 11th of June 2017, Farming's Annual Open Day, managed by LEAF, Linking Environment and Farming. So we have uh, two host farmers giving presentations on their first Open Farm Sunday event. We have Izzy Brown, who organized a small Open Farm Sunday event at Sunday Hill Farm, and Matthew Naylor of Naylor Flowers, who hosted a very ambitious large event uh, last June. So irrespective of your farm type, I just want to make it clear that the, the principles, ideas and advice given by both Matthew and Izzy could apply to your event. Um, depend, it doesn't matter what size and type of event that you're planning. So keep that in the back of your mind during these presentations. And then to pull some of these uh, uh, key messages together, um, we have, uh, we're being joined by Richard Birkinshaw, uh, Open Farm Sunday Regional Coordinator for the North of England. But first, we are delighted that Matthew Naylor, who farms in Lincolnshire, has agreed to share his experiences of hosting his first Open Farm Sunday event. So, over to you, Matthew. I'm Matthew Naylor. I'm the Managing Director of Naylor Flowers, a family-owned uh, flower growing company in South Lincolnshire. And I've known about Leaf Open Farm Sunday for many years. Um, it was founded by a friend of mine, and I was always very keen to take part, but a little bit nervous um, about how we'd go about it and doing it well. But the process was really good from when we registered our event with LEAF and spoke to other farmers locally, we realized that there were a lot of people who were willing to help us. And I'd made it uh, my plan to do something in style if we were doing it personally. I didn't want to do a small uh, event. I wanted to get lots of people there, so we, we really got stuck in. But for some farmers, it's more appropriate to start small with probably 20 or 30 or 50 visitors. That obviously doesn't matter. I can't take all the credit for what we did on our day because my secretary, Deborah, was brilliant. And it definitely needs one person who is organized, who chases the details. And it's always quite a nice idea to pull together a little committee, a working group um, of people who are passionate. But at the end of the day, you need one person who really ties down the details and makes sure that anyone who's bringing a stand knows where they're going and what time they're going to be there. And at ours, that wasn't me. That was Deborah, and she was brilliant. Um, and we also got a lot of help from neighboring farmers who had done it before Simon. Uh, day at Worth Farms was who held it last year. He was brilliant and gave me a lot of advice. Uh, and other neighbours lent us trailers to drive people around. So it really was a community effort. And I think, yeah, engage with your neighbours because I think sometimes they're relieved that somebody else has taken um, taken the initiative and is organising it. So they're happy to join in and help you because they know it's saved them a job. But I think the most important thing, in my experience, is you've got to really engage with your local community at every level. And if you can find what people are passionate about and give them a platform to come and do it on your farm, then that's the easiest way of attracting people and getting them there in the right spirit. So we did an art competition, for example, for six local schools, and the children did pictures of what they thought a farm was like. And then on the day, they were all on display and judged, and children got to actually see what a farm was like. We also invited our local farm machinery enthusiasts, the Vintage Machinery Club, to do a tractor rally. And uh, we sent the letter out and uh, said that we'd do bacon sandwiches and coffee for everyone who showed up. And didn't get much of a response. And then on the day, 25 vintage tractors arrived. And we sent them off on a drive around all the local villages with a big sign on the back of the lead tractor advertising the event. And that proved really popular and added quite a bit of fun and uh, like a little carnival. Um, 
we delegated some of the jobs, the like the refreshment tent. Um, we got our local Macmillan Cancer Fundraising Committee to do that, and they made teas, coffees, and cakes, and um, took the income, uh, and it raised a thousand quid, which was good for them, and they were very keen to do it. We also um, used the Lincolnshire Voluntary Emergency Service, uh, who were doing our first aid, just in case anything went wrong, and as it turned out, it didn't. Um, but St John's Ambulance would do the same job, and we decided since they were there, it was worth doing resuscitation training for the children as well, so that was another activity. Um, I think, so those, those sort of things really work well. And plus it plants the idea in lots of different parts of the local community. And I think people are more likely to come if they hear about the event from more than one source. If two or three people mention it, then it's more likely to get them there. Um, my personal perspective is it's better to make it fun rather than trying to hard sell your opinions on your particular style of agriculture. Um, so we didn't... We didn't have stands telling people what we sprayed things with or how we sprayed things or you know, what technical ways we drilled things. We just wanted to create a nice atmosphere so that the visitors liked us and trusted us and thought it was a, you know, a good, trustworthy environment. So we had handmade painted signs for all the attractions and bales of straw for people to sit on. And we also had several live musicians playing throughout the day, a local brass band and the ukulele orchestra. Some of them played for free, some of them charged a small amount. And I accept that our event was probably more quirky than some, but it did make for a really fun experience. And that actually made it more fun for me and the family and for all the people who work here. We all really enjoyed doing it. Um, so. The other thing, and the, I suppose the final thing that I would say that I've learned from it, is make sure you've got someone taking lots of photos, because it's probably going to be the most vibrant and lively event that your farm will ever experience. And we've never had 1,500 people on our farm in one day before, and it was buzzing. And we got lots of photos, and the sun was shining, but you can't have too many photos or videos. So get the local secondary school art students doing filming or taking photos if you can, because it's something that you'll really want to remember. Thank you very much there, Matthew. That was a fantastic uh, first Open Farm Sunday event with lots of words of advice that will apply to many of uh, our other Open Farm Sunday events. So now we have our next presentation. We're heading down to Wiltshire to Sunday Hill Farm, where Izzy Brown is going to talk to us, uh, talk through how she organised the first Open Farm Sunday event there. Hello everyone, I'm the Farm Secretary at Sunday Hill Farm in Brinkworth, here in North Wiltshire. In 2014, I persuaded my employers, Roger and Sophie Scruton, that we should open the gates and hold an Open Farm Sunday event. Sunday Hill Farm is a small farm of around 100 acres. The land is all permanent pasture, which we mostly rent to our neighbouring farmers for grazing and haymaking. Farming here is about encouraging wildlife, preserving the land and supporting the local rural economy. I vaguely knew about Open Farm Sunday but had never been involved in one. So the first step for me was to look at the website and work out if we could get involved. Our concern was that we didn't have enough for people to see and do. Anyway, I took the plunge and signed us up. Unfortunately, I had missed out on attending our local information event, but the website is fantastic. I understand these webinars have now replaced the information events, which is great, so that everyone can access the recordings. The resources available cover everything you might think of, and the Host Farmer's Handbook was my Bible leading up to the event. The first surprise came when we were contacted by BBC Radio Wiltshire. They had visited the Open Farm Sunday website and seen that we were taking part. We were invited to speak on the radio and encourage everyone to come along to Sunday Hill Farm for Open Farm Sunday. The radio show spoke to a different Wiltshire farmer every day that week. We now have a brilliant contact with BBC Radio Wiltshire, who we speak to whenever we hold events. 
As well as the Open Farm Sunday website and the radio, we try to advertise the event locally and also on our own website. People emailed and called to ask if they could bring their dogs and children and elderly grandparents, so we started to wonder how many people might actually turn up. We asked our neighbour and local community stalwarts, Geoffrey and Angela Vines, for their help. Geoffrey brought down tables, chairs and some straw bales, while Angela put on a feast for our visitors to enjoy. We had cakes, scones, sausage rolls, teas and coffees, and all donations went to the local hospice, a well-supported charity in our area. We also asked friends, a local dairy farmer and cheesemaker, to bring their cheese and ice cream. They too gave us a lot of encouragement and support. We could not have done it without them. On the day, we had no idea how many people might actually turn up, but they did, and they arrived early. I tried to take a register, but in the end it was a bit of a guess how many people were there, but it was about 60, far more than we expected. We did farm walks around the farm, stopping off at the pond, the wildflower meadow, and the highest point of the farm to take in the beautiful views. We also had our four Hereford heifers on display, plus the horses and the chickens. And that was it, really. But everyone entertained themselves and enjoyed the freedom of walking around the farm in open fields. What went wrong? Nothing really went wrong, thank goodness. We hadn't thought about parking enough, but fortunately the weather was dry and we could park some cars in the field. We have three entrances to the farm and we should have thought better about directions and signs from the main road. I used the host farmer handbook to complete our risk assessment and used the resources on the website to print signs and information. The best thing about our Open Farm Sunday event was that we all absolutely loved it. It was really fun and enjoyable for everyone. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed, Izzy. So that really does sound a, a wonderful first time small Open Farm Sunday event. But what a great opportunity for visitors to find out about how you're farming the land, environmental conservation, how you manage the natural resources, food production. That's all brilliant. Right, so now we are hoping to head up to um, Yorkshire to our regional coordinator there, Richard Birkinshaw, um, to add some words of wisdom. So over to you, Richard. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. So I'm Richard Birkinshaw, and I'm based in Brighouse in West Yorkshire, and I'm the Open Farm Sunday regional coordinator for the whole of the north of England, that's through Yorkshire, Lancashire, Cumbria, right up into Durham, Tynham, Weir, and Northumberland. Um, I visited many Open Farm Sundays before. I helped a national sponsor organize many Open Farm Sundays, and I've worked as a volunteer on many as well. So um, welcome all, and uh, I hope as first-time Open Farm Sunday uh, participants, I, I can encourage you into what is a very worthwhile um, uh, exercise. <clears throat> So thank you very much to Matthew and to Izzy, um, two very different Open Farm Sunday events, but two very successful ones. Um, I think that's the first message to highlight is that each Open Farm Sunday event is unique, and that's very much up to you, depending on the size of the event you feel comfortable in hosting, uh, the layout of your farm, the resources you have, and the message you want to, to give to the public, um, whether it's you know, a fun community event such as Matthew's, or whether it's focusing very much on the environment, as was Izzy's. The first step really is to decide how many visitors you want. And first of all, I'd like to reassure you that this is very much in your control. Um, you could start very small, as Izzy did, um, working with local organizations or even having a, a personal invitation list. Uh, where you invite people perhaps to a, a farm walk or a small event on your farm. Or alternatively, you can do more publicity um, and advertising and spread the word and hope to invite a larger number of people. But it's very much up to you. And in fact, there is a forthcoming webinar about publicity, which is designed to help you in some of those decisions as to how to communicate and how to manage the, the number of visitors and uh, uh, and how many people come onto your farm. But in any case, good planning is always essential. Um, and the tips there really are to get a group together. Don't try to do everything yourself. But do allocate 
uh, responsibilities. Try have one individual in the lead. Um, do start early. Do review often. Uh, and in fact, the second webinar in this series was very much about the organization of events. And you may want to go back and watch that recording uh, again or see it if you didn't catch it the first time as it has some very good tips as to how to plan your event. Start early. Why not start now? Also, take advice from experienced host farmers. I think we'd all agree that uh, the tips from Matthew and uh, Izzy today have been very, very valuable, uh, many different points to take into account. Um, but do remember, there are many, many hundreds, in fact, thousands of farmers who've done Open Farm Sunday before. And a lot of their experience is recorded on the Open Farm Sunday website, where you can go and look for case studies, uh, you can look for tips. Uh, there is, of course, the uh, handbook, which you get issued after registering. There are many case studies, and if you need, you can always get in contact with us, <clears throat> whether it's your regional coordinator or the LEAF office. Uh, it's what we are there for, and all our phone numbers and contact details are also on the website. Do collaborate. Do book helpers early. Think about the people, perhaps your neighbors, your farming neighbors, maybe your suppliers, your feed supplier, your, your vet. Maybe in your community you have uh, scouts, cubs, women's institute, churches, organizations. Why not invite them to come and participate in Open Farm Sunday with you? You'd be amazed how many people love to come and volunteer for these kind of events because it is, speaking from personal experience, very, very rewarding actually helping somebody run Open Farm Sunday. Um, but book people's diaries. Make sure they keep their, their day free. Double check in good time before the event just to make sure that they are going to turn up. And when they do come, um, yes, offer them responsibilities. Perhaps let them have a choice as to whether they'd rather do A or B. But do look after them. Make sure they get time for a drink. Uh, make sure they get something to eat. Um, make them uh, make it a good day out for them as well, and, and you'll be surprised how much they enjoy helping you. And after all, you may want them back for a second or third or fourth year for Open Farm Sunday. So it's good to think ahead and see what your volunteers are good at and what they like doing, and perhaps build a team up not just for your first year, but on an ongoing basis. On the next slide, uh, I'd like to point out that one particular tool which is very useful, again available from the uh, Farm Sunday website, is the Open Farm Sunday checklist. It's simple, it's clear, it helps you cover all the essentials, uh, and in my experience it works every time to help you organize a successful Open Farm Sunday. Most of all, when you're thinking about your event itself, try and imagine, try and visualize what the day is going to be like. There's some things you can't control, like the weather, so make sure you have plenty of wet weather alternatives, like a barn or uh, somewhere under cover that people can go. But do think what people might be doing, um, where they might be taking photographs, um, what they might find interesting, like meeting animals or um, large farm machinery, or actually going on a walk and seeing what happens in the hedgerows and the ditches, or even seeing what happens in a square meter uh, or in a spade depth of soil, uh, what goes on underneath a square meter producing uh, a loaf of bread and how many worms are involved in there. Think about the specific things that people are going to see and people are going to remember and people are going to photograph and take home and tell their friends and neighbors what a good day out they've had. Do have plenty of things for people to do. You can't talk to everybody on the day because it's inevitable you'll have big clusters of visitors all arrive at once. Um, so do plan for things like walks, quizzes, um, plenty of things for people to see uh, and to do. You'll see in the bottom right-hand corner of the slide, well, that's a picture of me with my straw hat on. It was a sunny open farm Sunday, and uh, we have a little grain mill set up there on a table, and the kids are taking turns to mill grain into flour, uh, and they're actually seeing, many for the first time, how not just grains are grown, but how they're transformed into flour, and then we sieved out the flour uh, and the bran 
and they absolutely love that hands-on experience. So things like that where people can touch and feel and experience something new for the first time really create those memories that people then take home and remember, well, hopefully for next year, but also remember um, for a lifetime. Do prepare as much as you can. It may seem a long time until June the 11th now, but there's loads to do. Start early. Uh, make sure you uh, perhaps use that checklist, do your risk assessment, sort out your insurance. Usually it's free, but you do have to tell your insurer. Think about where your people uh, need to go. Perhaps start making your signs uh, as to where people arrive, um, how you welcome them. Just simple things like where are the toilets. Um, just imagine you are the visitor coming to your farm for the first time. Think about how you can make it easy for people. Um, coming to your farm, you know it well, you know your way around. Um, you also know what goes on, and it may seem normal and uh, even mundane to you at times. But for new visitors, it's a whole new world, and uh, you're going to be able to enlighten them by seeing something very special that they don't normally see in their, in their uh, daily lives. So try and make it easy safe, and above all, keep it simple. Um, you don't have to do everything, particularly on a first year open farm Sunday. Um, you can always do a second or a third and add something else in the second and the third year, or change something for something else. Decide what you want to do, but also decide what you don't want to do. Keep it simple, keep it easy for yourself, make it a successful day. And above all, don't worry. Because you're not alone. Many hundreds or thousands of farmers have been first-time Open Farm Sunday farmers before. Uh, and they've all had successful events. And they've all gone away with the pride of sharing their story from their farm um, to hundreds of thousands of members of public uh, who've had a great day out and taken away a very, very favorable impression of farmers, farming, and the countryside. Good luck with your venture, and uh, for the north of England, I'm available to help you. Uh, look forward to seeing your case studies in next year's handbook and next year's videos. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Richard. Um, and one thing, uh, we've got one other slide here before we go on to the questions. And don't forget that you can actually, using the box top right, you can uh, type in your questions and we'll answer them very shortly. But one thing that we did just want to alert you to is that we have got a, a new um, Facebook closed group specifically for host farmers. On here is the link that you can go through to. My colleague then approves everybody who, who joins it. And so it, it's specifically for host farmers. And, and we asked host farmers there to, um, to add some, uh, for their thoughts on what advice they would give to first time host farmers. And, and there are some great um, suggestions that come up. There we go from Nicola. Plan ahead, do as much early stuff as you can now. Talk to your insurance company, book your helpers, start marketing. Um, one of the people, Emily Wilson, said actually it surprised how difficult it was to actually book the first aid organisations. So that's interesting. So if you need, if you're planning a large event and need a first aid organisation, get your booking in early. Or else, and she offers some uh, uh, suggestions as to other people how she managed to get over the problem of not being able to get an official organisation and where she got help. So. Um, yeah, so lots of advice. Um, time is pressing on, so I think we need to head over to um, our questions. So uh, here we are, and do we uh, let's have a look at some of the questions that are coming in. So. Matthew, before the, the, we answer some of the uh, official ones, Matthew, can I just ask you, um, how did you feel in the 24-hour run-up to your first Open Farm Sunday event? What was it like? I was quite apprehensive. Um, yeah, obviously excited because we'd put in a lot of publicity, but I think, and it's a characteristic of mine, I'd, I'd probably put myself under a bit too much pressure, so perhaps people could learn from that. Um, but as it turned out, the weather was good and it was fine. Um, Matthew, um, here's another question for you. Um, I know you run a, a huge uh, uh, flower business, 
but uh, have you or Deborah ever actually organised an event as big as this before? Um, I've done one or two sort of charity events in the past, um, but this was definitely uh, different to anything that we'd been involved with before. I did used to be involved in the flower parade in Spalding, so I've got a little bit of knowledge from that. But actually hosting things on your own premises is a completely different kettle of fish. And in a lot of ways, it gives you a lot more freedom. It's a lot more fun to do it yourself because you really can control the agenda. Absolutely. And uh, someone's asked a question here. You said that you booked um, your local first aid uh, people to come. Did, did you actually have to pay for that service? How did that work? We did pay them and um, well what we did is we made a donation and we have a local voluntary group of first responders called lives which is Lincolnshire um, I don't know what the, the thing is but they're, they're volunteers and I think it's worth looking around at organizations like St John's ambulance and first responder groups because a you know a donation of I think we gave them 150 pounds 200 pounds something like that and um, but then on the day they were as we said, doing teaching children CPR, and so they were, yeah, they were sort of rolling out their message at the same time. So we all benefited from that. Brilliant. And and uh, another question that's come in: How did the artwork competition actually work? The one that you said, I'm from memory, you said that you engaged with six schools, but how how did you actually organise that? Oh, we did. Yeah, we got them all to submit the pictures a week before the paintings and then uh, we had a um, it was quite low tech we'd got a lot of wooden boxes so we made a wall out of them and then stapled the pictures to them and then got a local artist to come and judge and actually that's quite a nice tip to have some any sort of contests we had a welly wanging competition um, but if you can involve then local sort of well-known local people or anyone in the community who um, people might know of, it, it's quite fun to engage them and get them judging and taking part or scoring. It's Yeah, that was that was a good way of including people. Brilliant. And uh, for your car parking, you, I mean, with 1,500 people, where did people park? Where, how did you manage that? That was a bit of a challenge. What we, we had got um, some tractor and trailers um, to drive people around the farm so they were set up and what we ended to when we filled up we had five six of us marshalling car parking but then when we were full here we parked people at the next door farm and then used one of the tractor and trailers after it had done a tour it had to double back and then do a shuttle service and then we filled that farm and we had to move to the next farm and ferry people from there. So it was it was a full time job for two people on two way radios. I would that's a really good thing if you're doing an event with more than fifty people or over a big area, they're quite cheap to buy these two way radios and they're invaluable on a day like that. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, thank you very much indeed, Matthew. That's great. Izzy, have you are you with us or are you still not there? No, I hate to say it, we were talking perfectly to you earlier on um, when we were testing uh, sound earlier, but I'm sorry, um, you're not here now. So, right, well, I think uh, we haven't got any more questions that have come in, so it, all that's left really for me to do is to say thank you so much to our presenters today, to Izzy Brown, to Matthew Naylor, to Richard Birkinshaw, and thank you to all of you for... Um, taking part in this uh, webinar and for taking part in Open Farm Sunday. We hope that you have an absolutely uh, fantastic experience. I have one last slide. Don't forget some of the essentials. They've been mentioned before. Please make sure that your event is registered. Please make sure that you inform your insurance company and that you have £5 million public liability insurance. Please don't forget that you may need some licenses. You may need to contact your local council. If you've got music or a farmer's market um, or it's a, a massive event, I believe that you should uh, potentially get uh, 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 licenses, but your council can advise you on that. 
and make sure of course that you've got the necessary health and safety arrangements in place and the risk assessment. But as we've said today, there is lots of help and support there from experienced toast farmers, from our regional coordinators, from the LEAF staff, on the website and on our Facebook group. So thank you very much indeed and next year, uh, the next uh, webinar is about publicity. That's on the 10th of February at 1 o'clock um, and we'll be going through the communications toolkit available to you. So thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you.